What's going on you guys? Back here today with how to mod your Power Mac G5 part three to make it compatible with ATX PC hardware. Now, uh, I filmed a little bit of this beforehand. I reassembled the door and sent it off to a local glass company and had actual glass put in this frame. So that's why that's already done. And I have footage of putting that together. But uh, let's go ahead and get started and talk about what we have. We have the outer part of the case, the main part of the case with the front perforations and the uh, front door for the case for the motherboard window. And then we have the hard drive cage, rear fan mount, rear fan mount piece, PCI slot covers, and the optical drive cover. And then also I modded this piece from the power supply just so I could have a nice pink outer power supply uh, plug. Yeah, and a couple of other pieces inside the case like the little rubber uh, port covers and the rear handle are painted pink as well just to kind of throw in a little bit more flair. But first things first, we are going to throw all of this stuff to the side and lay a towel or something soft down over this table because if we don't, everything is gonna get beat to smithereens and scratched all the hell. So the first thing we wanna do is start with our bags of screws and these main two pieces here because those pieces need to go together first. So what I'm actually gonna do is set this out of the way and lay this part flat on its back right in the center of the table here. And then the trick to this is to pull these apart as much as you can and then lower that piece in and make sure when you lower it in that A, you've got the top and the bottom on the right side. So um, that way it doesn't have any problems and your motherboard standoffs actually go to the back of the case. But B, you just wanna be very, very careful because this will scratch everything all up. And if you did a two-tone paint job like this one, it's gonna show those scratches a lot more. So just gonna go slow and easy with this and uh, hopefully we don't have any problems. So here we go. All right, and then once you have the bottom lined up, um, you just wanna pull these top and bottom levers, or uh, side edges, I guess, over as we did when we installed it. And I actually appear to have done a pretty okay job. There's a couple scratches, but they're not gonna be too noticeable. And um, yeah, so once this is started, we uh, then go on to the next process, and that is this whole bag of screws right here. And we're just going to screw in all, however many of those that there were before. Once the whole chassis is together with all the screws on the inside, the outside, the top, the bottom, all the way around, uh, you then wanna just throw your door on and say, oh, it looks so pretty, but I don't think that's the way to go with this because the next things you should be doing is putting in all these little pieces like the drive bay cover and the latch mechanism for the door and the fan grill because that looks cool too. So um, I've got a couple of little small pieces here and we're gonna go ahead and install all those right now. The next thing we're gonna do is put on this latch mechanism. Uh, we need the pin, the little nylon washer, and the circlip that go on there. So let me move these to where you can see them. So you need those three pieces, the pin, the nylon washer, and the uh, C-clip. And then once we uh, have those things set aside, I'm just gonna toss them in the case. You grab the actual plastic latch mechanism here and it's got this little um, indent on it. 
for where it slides on. There's a couple little bolts right here. You just put that on there and then slide it up and over. And then using the Allen wrench and those uh, like thicker uh, nuts that go on there, you just want to thread those on. Um, and there is, there is five of those. So um, just grab five of them and go ahead and screw them on. And then once you get them all finger tight, go ahead and grab your Allen wrench and tighten those up. So here, once we have everything on there, we're just gonna tighten these up. But don't go too tight because we still need this piece to slide. So um, I don't think you can with these because it used to have a piece of metal underneath it to divide the chassis space. But um, yeah, you just don't wanna, you wanna make sure that the latch mechanism can still slide back and forth. And once that's tight, and still slides we can then go ahead and put the little pin in here so you grab the pin grab that pin right there and throw it up through the bottom of this little hook mechanism and line it up with the uh, latch mechanism and i believe it has to be at one side or the other i'm not sure um, or you can just do that and force it through um, So once it's through there, you're going to want to grab your little C-clip and there we go, it's on there by some miracle. Last piece on this latch mechanism that we need to put on are the hinge pieces that actually hold the door on. And remember you want these to face forward slide them down into the latch mechanism. And then these little pins just push on the edge of the pin itself. So line that up and pop it on there and it's good. So just quick assembly for that and we are good to go. So here we have the door and we're just gonna start off by picking up our frame and putting our plastic inserts inside the frame. Um, basically, you wanna set them where they're supposed to go and then give them a nice firm press in and that way they hopefully should stick where they're supposed to go so when you flip it over, they don't fall out, assuming I did this right. But I'm just gonna put some fingers on them just to make sure and just line it up with your uh, frame here and drop it into place. And that is going to be your starting point for how this whole thing is going to come together. Then once you have your door sitting, or the frame sitting in the door, you're just gonna start taking your screws and throwing them in for all 18 of them. And I recommend going in a cross pattern. Just get a couple in there. See, this one didn't line up right away means this is out of line so push it into alignment and when you get your four major corners uh, set up in the right spot from there it should just go on nicely So now that you've got your frame in your door, immediately you're just gonna wanna stick your acrylic in there and call it good, but we really need to clean up the edges of this. So the first thing we're gonna do is start by grabbing our edge molding here. And in this bottom corner, that's where we're gonna start. So this edge molding actually has uh, one side that's a little longer than the other side. So that's gonna be our outside. So we wanna start with that on the bottom center of the door and the longer side going to the outside. And this edge molding in particular has a little adhesive strip. So you're gonna to wanna to start by grabbing this adhesive strip and pulling this out just a little bit, making sure to leave the adhesive in there because, well, we want it to adhere. And then we should be good to go. And after taking a look at it, uh, I don't really like the way that it's not sitting down where it's supposed to. So I think this white molding is not gonna be any good. So I'm gonna go grab the black molding that I used on my build. 
So this black molding here is a little bit uh, more rigid than this white molding stuff is. This stuff is kind of junk actually, so I'm not gonna use it. Um, there's gonna be plenty of black inside the case, so this will look fine. But basically you just wanna start off, this is used, so this edge isn't very clean. So I'm gonna start off by cutting it with a nice new straight edge. There we go. And this is uniform on both sides, so it doesn't have that one side that's longer than the other. Um, so we're just gonna start by pulling it apart a little bit and getting it wrapped around this, uh, this cutout here in this door. And this one we will definitely need the heat gun for. So this one you just really wanna focus on going slow, making sure it gets wrapped around both sides and it will start to come together pretty quickly. And I will leave uh, links to this edge molding down in the description below. So right here in this corner, you'll notice that this stuff is really, really hard. And we're gonna wanna plug in our heat gun and get that all situated uh, to heat that up so we can get it around the corners nicely. All right, and our heat gun has two settings. There's a low, it's this one's low and a high. And basically we're just gonna go on high and go short and lift this up and you'll see this when it gets flexible enough, it'll start to just drop down, but you wanna make sure you heat both sides. So go from the top and then come to the bottom and hit the bottom. So I'm actually gonna start on the bottom here. All right, so that's probably plenty and it's pretty flexible right now. And you'll see it just wants to conform right around that edge. And basically you wanna stick it in there, get to a firm spot, make sure it's grabbed on the frame, and then look at the front and make sure that the front of this looks how you want it to look. So it's nice and smooth and flat and it rests up against the side back here. So now we're just gonna keep on moving on. So you wanna let this dry for a little bit or cool off, I guess, for a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, should be good to keep moving along. So once you get here, you're at the last part, and my recommendation is to cut this a little longer than you think it needs to be. So pull it off just a little bit, and then cut it just a little bit further up. And then, your last little bit, you'll have to kind of force into place, but then it won't have any gaps in it. So then when you look at it from the front, it's nice and seamless. Well, it has a seam, but it doesn't look there's no big gap, but you basically have your full window. And then if you're using acrylic, you can have your acrylic cut out to the same size as this frame, just like this piece. You can put double-sided sticky tape on here, just like this piece. And then you're just gonna flip it over and set it in the frame, sticking it along all sides. And just like that, you have the acrylic window. But like I said, I'm gonna take this out and uh, take this to a local glass shop and have them cut a piece of glass to put in there. Like I said, it's 25 bucks and it's well worth the difference. Moving on, the next piece we have is the optical drive um, slot that's gonna go right where my fingers are right now. So you just wanna line this up so that this piece is pushed up and to the top and these four little pins on the outside, which are not gonna be in focus, are gonna need to be pushed in and they will just slide right in. So it's kind of a, kind of a weird way that it has to hook in, but it should go pretty smooth. Um, and it will require at least a little bit of force. So I'm just going to drop that in there. All right, and that's all slid in. So now we're gonna move on to the back fan grills. So on these back fan grills, you have 
four of these indents or slots. Um, two are narrow and two are wide. You wanna make sure that you orient it so that the grills face outward um, and the tabs go in to the case and that the narrow side goes toward this side of the case because uh, that way the fan mount holds into place. So all you do for this piece is just line it up, throw it in there, and then using 10, I believe, or nine of these little tiny screws that are not gonna be in focus, um, you're just gonna go around and screw those in. Before we move on to our PCI slot covers, um, and after that, we're going to screw back in our power button assembly and get that tightened down and the top lid put back on. So the last and arguably most important thing we have to do to finish this system or this mod off is throw the side panel back on. So what we're gonna do is just line it up down here at the bottom, let it drop in, close it and latch it up. And here we go, we have the completed custom painted, fully ATX ready Power Mac G5 in our lovely white and pink color scheme. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Like this video, it'll help a ton. Subscribe to my channel, watch me grow. Uh, my last video is gonna be over here and another video from my channel is gonna be over here. So there's gonna be one more part of this build log and that is me putting a fully water-cooled system in this. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are excited for that. Uh, that's gonna wrap this up. I hope you all have a wonderful day.